This is so wizard, Andy. Altered Reality Entertainment and Cardi's Furniture present Rhode Island Comic Con. Meet heroes and villains like Tom Welling, Michael Rosenbaum, Carl Urban, and Michael Rooker. Play a game of thrones with Gwendolyn Christie, Natalia Tenna, Finn Jones, and Jessica Henwick. Book photo ops with Hayden Christensen, Tom Felton, Elvira, and Ron Perlman. Join us at the Rhode Island Convention Center for the 7th Annual Rhode Island Comic Con, November 2nd through the 4th. Get tickets at ricomiccon.com. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastare. You are listening to So Wizards. You are thinking, you said people gonna die? The only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. There'll be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time for episode number 221 of the So Wizard podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts are the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Uh, hi. <laughs> and the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Yeah, this week's episode is brought to you by 1972's Blackula. His bite was out of sight. You are listening to So Wizard Podcast. Three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly. This week, we're going to talk a little bit of news, and then we're going to take a look at at least the first episode and our impressions of the newest series on Netflix, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. But before we get into that, how's everybody doing? Mark Hellis, tell us, Mark Hellis, what's going on? Uh, nothing much, man. Nothing really new is happening. Uh, I've been working on, uh, my art project that I didn't get done in time for last week, but I've been slowly, uh, refining what I've been wanting to do and it's coming out pretty good. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about what I'm doing now. And unfortunately doing a podcast kind of takes away from that. So, uh, I'm, uh, hoping that I could figure out a way to like balance it a lot better. Let's put it that way. Nice. And, uh, how about you, Aubrey? What's going on? Uh, I'm still in retail. So... Yeah, that's about it. That's that's all I got. Are things going better at, at work, Aubrey? Fuck no. No, still. No. Damn. God, I hate I hate my life. Not until middle of January, Mark. Yeah, you know, I I think that that is when I will get fired too. So we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the more end time of the fiscal edit year. Patreon episodes. So. Yeah. But it's the end of the fiscal year. They can fire me then and then blame the previous fiscal year on me. So it'd be prime time. They won't have to replace me during the holidays, you know. All right, but no one has like tried to slap anything out of your hand or anything like that this week, right? Not yeah. this week. Um, I think that the world has just given up on me. Oh, I got you. They're like, we're not going to go here because this bitch doesn't care anymore. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. All right. What about you, Joey? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> work, sleep, work, sleep. Work, sleep. Yeah, I mean, we're getting ready for uh, Rhode Island Comic Con coming up this weekend as we record this. So uh, my work schedule is I'm working Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Thursday night, I'm working – well, Thursday night into Friday morning, I'm working. So I'll get home around 7 a.m. on Friday. But I can't go to bed. I have to give my wife a ride to work and then come back. And then I might try to sleep for like an hour or so. But I also have to pack and then kind of try to prep for the con to like figure out what panels and stuff we want to go to before I pick everybody up and we head down there. So, yeah, to take that sounds like a lot of planning. I don't plan on doing any of that. I'm just going to wing it. You're going <laughs> to wing it this time. Yeah, I'll be lucky if I even bring like a, a change of clothes, even a, a digital a change of clothes. <laughs> I might even I might even forget the recorder at home. I might just you write everything your down. Your toothbrush. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll be I'll be ready. I hope. Oh, we're we're always ready. So it'll be fun. It'll be a good time. I'm excited to see our uh, personalized press passes. Oh Jesus! They uh, they're going to have our names printed on them this time. And when they sent me the email, it was like it took everything I had not to be like Mark. Ellis Regans or <laughs> Marcellus or Mark 
<laughs> just to fuck with you. I would have. I would have quit the show. <laughs> I would have. I would have walked up to someone and be like, "Hey, hey, you look like a Marcellus. Here you go. Put this badge on." <laughs> Does Marcellus want to look like? A bitch? <laughs> exactly. So. I, 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 you will be proud to know that I did not do that. It should be spelled. If it's not spelled right, it's not my fault. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, dude. Let's put it that way. <laughs> as long as it lets us get in the door, we should be happy. <laughs> That's right. All right. So all that being said, uh, Mark, why don't you tell the listeners out there where they can find more So Wizard Podcasts? All right. So everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find the new episodes there every week. Uh, you'll also find movie reviews from yours truly, Netflix and Amazon streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Wallyhawk. You'll also find our merchandise there so you can purchase some of our T-shirts and look good while you're representing the show. Uh, another great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping through the link that we keep right on the website. You click on that big A, you do your shopping, you receive your products, and you'll be helping out our little show here. Uh, you can also find our social media links there. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. Uh, you can also find us on the Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone, on Podbean, Google Play Music, and you can also stream us through Spotify. Uh, you can also uh, support us through Patreon, patreon.com backslash Podcast. Contribute to the show and uh, get some bonus material from us. Uh... This week's pop jam is not K-pop. This is the king of pop himself, MJ, because uh, it's Halloween time. Back to you, Joey. Have you ever danced with a devil in the pale moonlight? Did you? No, but I did. And I did like a devil. <laughs> Is that Joaquin Phoenix? Who was that? That was amazing. Oh, I, I think that was Gal Gadot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think I have to do something. Uh oh. What are you gonna do? Oh, I, I just I need to uh, give a shout out to our current Patreons as part of uh, them joining us on Patreon, which you can do at patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast. Uh, we shout you out in the show and uh, we're going to give a shout out to our current Patreons who are helping us afford to <laughs> have a podcast and hopefully in the future have some better equipment and uh, get to some more cons and some cool stuff. So let's start off with Adam Wally Hawk, who we all love and know from uh his work on our website and among other things, uh, the boys over at cult 45, uh, random Randy Savage and beat him down. You've heard him on the show before, and we've been on their show and hopefully we'll be on their show again in the future. Uh, I don't think Aubrey, you've never been on their show, right? I've never been on anybody else's show. <laughs> Aww. I'm too lazy. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> We'll have to get you on there, but not for a horror movie. Um, yeah, it's next to impossible for me to find time to be on somebody else's show. I'll do better. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, Des Desmond Dunn, the uh, former host of the late, great, and lamentedly missed Nerdtastic podcast. Uh, Gary Viola, who is an associate of our friends at Pina Comics. Uh, home Video Hustle podcast. Love those guys. Check out the show. It's freaking hilarious and awesome. Uh, Iko the Rain Man. I don't know if I'm supposed to put his real name out there, so I won't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know how he is about the feds, man. He's Iko. That's Boo right. thing, baby capes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I hope it's good. Uh, shout out to Boo Thing Baby Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jar Jar Jeremy from the Angry Geek Show. <laughs> Love Jar Jar. Yeah, buddy. And uh, let's see here. Jessica Nichols, who I believe uh, we read her, answered one of her listener questions a couple weeks ago on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's one of my best friends in the world. Thanks, Jess. Mm -hmm. uh, John from John Amenta from Pina Comics. Uh, awesome show again. Definitely should check them out. Uh, Steven from Super Retro Throwbacks reviews who you heard on our show helping us review skyscraper another awesome podcast friend who you should check out and of course uh my favorite podcast the countdown movie and tv reviews with paul and wayne 
Uh, me and Mark were on there what, was about a month or so ago, I don't battling even them, uh, which was a lot of fun. And hopefully we get to be on there again. So we might have to call Paul in if uh, we have to do another horror review because he's a big horror fan. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> We've got a bench. We're building the bench, Aubrey. We're going to save you from <laughs> any more panic attacks. Thank God. Well, that's uh, those are our Patreon so far. So thanks so much to those people. And you can become one of them at patreon.com backslash so was your podcast. Get yourself some extra content as well as uh, additional episodes of the podcast each month. And now enough about us. Let's talk about the news. Mark, I know anyone can do cookie cutter nerd news, but let's do it. Oh, yeah. I got my cookies coming fresh out the kitchen. <laughs> All right, so this week in nerdy news, it actually was not a big week at all for for uh, news stuff, or at least some of the stuff that I came across. But uh, I'm going to throw some some things at you and uh, oh just want your hot takes on it. All right, so uh, this is something that I'm not 100% familiar with. They're making a Monster Hunter movie. Uh, it's from the people behind Resident Evil. Uh, and I saw Mila Jojovic uh, posting pictures on Instagram of her in the, the big like armor suit, the big fantasy armor suit. Uh, I guess it's taking place in modern day, which I think is uh, kind of different from the original game. I haven't played the game ever, obviously, but I uh, watched a uh, fellow podcaster Rose on um, Rose from the Nerdtastic podcast. Uh, she used to do a Twitch and she played the game and I used to have that on in the background while I was editing the show. So I have an idea of what the visual looks like for the game, and I'm not sure if that's something that, that the guy from Resident Evil can pull off. Uh, so I'm not sure how to feel about this. Uh, like I said before about Hellboy, whenever you put Mila Jojovic in a movie, that's automatically a B movie. Uh, but Aubrey, you play video games. Are you familiar with Monster Hunter, and do you think this will make a good movie? I am familiar with Monster Hunter. I think it'd make an okay movie. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an interesting concept. Um, it, it's an okay idea. I don't know. It, I, I feel like they're just picking weird kind of games to make movies of. I, I mean, I guess it's okay. I don't think it's going to do that well, though. I think they could have chose something else. Something like Overwatch? Would that make a movie? No, I, I... no. I, I mean, you could. Essentially, it's, it's just it's very multiplayer kind of. I mean, so I guess you could. I just say that uh, I don't even know really what game would make a good movie. God of War would be kind of a really interesting movie. Oh, uh, there you go. There yeah, you go. that'd be kind of an interesting movie. I just feel like Monster Hunter, it's cool in its own right, but I don't know if you can really make it an interesting movie per se. And then this storyline isn't grasping like it could be. Yeah, well, like it or not, we're getting it from. Uh... Paul Anderson. He's bringing it yeah. to us. Paul Anderson, you stop it. <laughs> Joey, what about you, man? What do you think about Monster Hunter being made into a live action movie with Mila? Um, I like Mila, but man, this is going to be bad, isn't it? It it probably will be. Yeah. I, I don't know. Did you see the last Resident Evil, their big finale? No. I think the last one I watched was with uh, Wesker in it. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> He, like, know. throws his sunglasses. I don't know. <laughs> Captain Cold's in it. Oh, okay. That was four, I think. Was that four? Okay. I don't know how many there even are at this point, but I really, as a huge fan of the Resident Evil games, I really hate those movies. Right. And uh, obviously, she's a terrible actress, no matter how good looking she is. And uh, he's a pretty terrible director. So <laughs> I think we know what we're getting from this. <laughs> It's going to be sh complete schlock, but it, that could be enjoyable. So I'm not writing it off just yet. Mm -hmm. It is a name brand, so I think that's going to at least get butts in his seats during the opening weekend. But we'll see. We'll uh, I think it'll be like it'll open like third place, like seven million dollars, <laughs> <laughs> but somehow inexplicably it'll be a huge hit overseas. Exactly. Exactly. I just want it to be half as good as Hitman 37. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hated that movie. Oh, God. What even was that? What are you talking about? There was the original Timothy Oliphant Hitman movie, and then there was the reboot that happened a couple of years ago, Hitman 47. 
Yeah, a, yeah, I remember the reboot. I didn't even see that. It was awful. <laughs> it looked terrible. Why it, did you go see that? What are you talking, uh, what are you movie doing? Pass, I think. I'm not even sure. Uh, I might have been working at the theaters, actually. Is that even worth $10? God, no. God, no. But uh, yeah, the movie was awful. Um, all right. So yeah, so Monster Hunter is coming out. Whoopee. Now, in, <laughs> in, in news that I'm like, all right, this is probably someone who just really hates Joey decided to put this together. <laughs> God, uh, they are developing a Get star- in line. <laughs> <laughs> they are developing a Star Trek animated comedy. Uh, and this is going to be from uh, one of the writers of Rick and Morty. Someone who's working oh, on that show. Jesus. <laughs> you are <laughs> out. <laughs> this sounds like everything I hate is made into one thing. Exactly. I was Star right. Star Trek, Rick and Morty comedy. <laughs> <laughs> As I was writing it down, I'm like, oh, God. This is perfect. It's like the nice little cocktail of of uh, joy hatred here. But yeah, the guy who's doing the show is a big Star Trek fan, and he's you know working on I don't know some he ha- he has an angle that when I read the description it seemed like it was a it would be silly. It's like the guys who um, almost like um, I know like Marvel has that team of people that go in and like clean up after the big events that happen. Damage like, control. Yeah. Kind of like that, but not damage control. Just people who are running the ship, like the I don't know, kind of like the office, maybe in the on the Enterprise. I'm not really sure. But Aubrey, you're a Star Trek fan, so I wanted to know your opinions on this. I already, based on the ingredients, I already know what Joey thinks about this, but I really wanted your opinion on it, Aubrey. Um, <laughs> you know, I saw I saw a snippet of this, like uh, I saw an ad for this, and I thought it was a joke, and I was hoping it was a joke. I was hoping it was an ad or something stupid that Facebook was just throwing at me because it looks Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this is the worst idea in the entire world. (laughs) I don't like Rick and Morty. I think it's stupid. It's Mm -hmm. that stupid humor that I don't like, like Family Guy. I don't like Family Guy. I hate it. And I don't understand why people like Rick and Morty so much. It's the same thing as Family Guy. I never understood why people were so obsessed with that. I think that, that Star Trek's not a comedy. It's never been a comedy. And I think making it a comedy is just, it's a bad idea. It's, God, it's a bad idea. It's going to tank so hard. Well, the good thing is it's going to be on the CBS streaming service, along with the other Star Trek TV shows that are coming out. So Nobody's going to pay for that trash. Only the fortunate people are going to get a chance to watch it. Um, so, Joey, really quickly, how do you feel about this, dude? Oh, my God. It's like the worst of everything rolled together in one. I'd n- I wouldn't watch this if you put a gun to my head. I was I was thinking if I if only we can get Gal Gadot to do the voice. Of oh, this, Jesus. <laughs> like, this would be the perfect show. This, is the, this will be the perfect I hate you now watch. Oh, that's <laughs> that's mean. I I tried to watch Rick and Morty because I have my, uh, you know, my second job at a very hot topical place. Right. And we have a large selection of this stuff from the show and the, well, uh, you know, the people that come in (laughs) to buy it are certainly not encouraging. But the, uh, you know, I was like, well, there must be something to it if we have like 12 feet of product from this show. Like there must be something that people like about it. So. I watched a single episode. I watched the very first episode on Hulu and it was just like, it's like, when, when does this get funny? Like, when does this get interesting or good? And I just couldn't take it anymore. And they're only like half hour episodes. And it's like, I can't do this. And I just shut it off. Yeah. Yeah. I hear. I know Rick and Morty has a lot of really big fans. I'm, I'm kind of in your boat, Joey. I tried to watch like a episode or two and it just didn't grab me like I wanted it to, but you know, I might, I might I'm go back to I'm also not like again. 16, so. Nah, you know. nah. But I'm a big Back to the Future fan, and it, it kind of hits those buttons for me a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, um, if you have the CBS All Access, you are going to be fortunate enough to watch a Star Trek animated comedy. So, uh, you know, let, watch it and let us know what you think of it. All right. So, speaking of uh, adaptations, they are making a live action My Hero Academia uh, movie. It's in development now. It's, this is another show that it's incredibly popular. People love it. And I I feel like it's something that I should be watching, but I haven't started watching it. I think I might have tried to watch like the first episode um, and fell asleep during it. Uh, but they are making a movie out of it. And this was news this week. So uh, are you guys familiar with My Hero Academia, Joey? Uh, I have watched some of it. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I know it's anime. Why don't you understand that anime belongs in the trash? <laughs> um, it, it's fine. It was okay. It was, wasn't offensive or anything. I know my daughter and uh, a lot of her friends are like obsessed with it. Oh, really? And it's super popular. It's the, the big anime right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. God, I can't imagine like a live action movie <laughs> of this, like being good. Maybe a TV show if somebody puts some money behind it. But like every time they try to make an anime into anything live action, it's terrible. It doesn't matter if it's Japanese or it's American or German or Nigerian. It's always terrible. <laughs> Lest we forget Full Metal Alchemist, the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually really love the uh, Star Blazers movie. And I haven't seen that. That's partly because I never really watched the show. Uh, but I think I think that movie, the Japanese movie, is amazing. It's like really, really good. But that's, that's, the, just, uh, that's my opinion. Live action Attack on Titan movie was terrible too. So yeah, I tried to watch that, but then the subtitles went out in the theaters. <laughs> I was oh. watching it, so uh, I didn't go back to finish watching it. And it's in two parts, so there was no way I was going to go back and start watching part two. That's on my list. Um, Aubrey, what about you? Are you familiar with My Hero Academia? Is that something that uh, might uh, tempt you to get out to the theaters? It's not a horror movie. Um, I watched episode one of it, Ooh. and I don't think that um, it would tempt me to go to the theaters. No. I like the anime. It's okay. It's an interesting concept. I haven't gotten around to watching more of it. Yeah. Um, but I do. I don't think it's going to make a good movie. Isn't it like superheroes in school? Kind of. I mean, there's a, the main character wants to be a superhero, but he wasn't born with the abilities. And, like, other people have abilities to be superheroes. They're kind of like mutants. So I guess in a way it's, like, reverse X-Men, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's going to make a good live-action movie. I think it makes a good anime, but not live-action. Hmm. Well, it's uh, it's got its fan base. They're psyched to see it, so uh, we'll, I'll, I'll check it out. You know, I like superheroes. I like Sky High. I like the movie Sky High. I thought that was pretty cool. And superheroes in school. No, I'm, Can't I'm, go I'm, wrong I'm, with Kurt Russell. Yeah, that movie is awesome. All right, now here's another uh, reboot that's coming out too. Uh, for some reason, they decided to make uh, to remake Clueless. Uh, Alicia Silverstone, Stacey Dash, uh, Brittany Murphy, uh, Donald Faison, I believe, was in it. Uh, this is the movie. Oh, Paul Rudd was in that shit too. Yeah, uh, he was. <laughs> this is the movie that uh, it uh, you know it was very popular and it's time. A lot of people loved it. I'm pretty sure that. I was working at the movie theaters when it came out and probably couldn't care less about it. For some reason, even though this, you watch that movie and it's very distinctly 90s, I don't know why they're going to remake it. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to translate in this day and age, but they're going to attempt it anyway. Are you guys excited for a Clueless remake? Uh, let's start with Aubrey. I think see, seeing how they're going to evolve the characters to current day issues is going to be really interesting and funny. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that they can capture the essence and the nostalgia of the original Clueless without it being in the 90s. Yeah, the thing I remember about Clueless is that it was a, an adaptation of uh, like a Jane Austen book or Shakespeare book or something. So I don't understand why they just don't redo that. That just seems. I feel odd. like that's the majority of those types of movies that really hit it off were adaptations of, of old books. Mm-hmm. Like, look at 10 Things I Hate About You. It was an adaptation of Taming of the Shrew. And that's an absolute gold mine right there. Oh, God. I love Julia Stiles in that movie so much. Mm -hmm. So much. But Save the last dance, Mark. <laughs> I love her in that movie, too. Oh, oh boy. She's the, she's awesome. Uh, Joey, what about you, dude? How do you feel about Clueless coming back? Um, I loved Clueless. Really? Back in the day. I don't think I've watched it in probably like 17 years. I saw it in the movie theater. I remember really liking it. Yeah. For I don't remember much about it other than that. I know Stacey Dash could probably literally like walk on set right now and reprise her role and no one would blink. Because <laughs> she looks like she hasn't aged in 30 years. Mm -hmm. She's still smoking hot, by the way, just, you know, oh, in she, case you were worried. She's crazy. But yeah, she's still smoking hot. Um, I'm The only thing that piques my interest is that the actress that plays Iris in The Flash. Yeah was camp campaigning on Twitter to take the Stacey Dash role. 
<laughs> All right. Now, suddenly, I am interested. <laughs> yeah, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. That's exactly. Right. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. But, yeah, and I'd watch her read the phone book, so I'm all in if that happened. <laughs> Word. <laughs> but I have a feeling we're going to get a very watered-down uh, PC millennial uh, not-so-great movie with a bad Alicia Silverstone cameo, and we'll be done. <laughs> Look For what it? they did to Heathers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She can do her, her Uncle Alfred. Uncle Alfred, it's me. <laughs> God. That poor woman. Hey, as long as they incorporate rolling with the homies, then I'm fine. That's all I want. <laughs> um, and uh, oh, you know, and on a side note, you remember Joy when we went to see uh, Halloween and they played that trailer for the uh, the Panic Room type of movie, the uh, Safe Room or whatever it was. Uh huh. And yeah, that trailer looked dumb, but Karen Page is in that movie, <laughs> and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm in. You got yeah. You, you got my two bits just because she's in a movie, even though in the trailer they show how she dies, which. I, I know it was bad. It, it looks sucks. terrible. But oh, yeah, I'm looked, all in. I, looked, I'll, I'll probably watch it on like F movies or something. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, and I think I think that's pretty much it for like big news. There was just a couple of really small things I wanted to throw out there. So we had on the show uh, Stephen from a uh, Super Retro Throwback, and uh, mm-hmm. he had mentioned that there was a book about Jonesy, the uh, cat from Alien, and uh, that there was a uh, comic book. Or an illustrated book about uh, Jonesy and Jonesy's adventure on the alien ship. And I just wanted to let everyone know that that book is out now. It's called Jonesy, uh, Nine Lives on the Nostromo. Uh, it just came out this past week and it looks awesome. It's, it, there's no words in it. Uh, no bubbles to read. It's just painted adventures of Jonesy's adventure as alien, the movie alien is going on in the background. Uh, so it's, it's fun to look at, uh, those same scenes, but from Jonesy's point of view. I think it's pretty funny. Um, and you can get it on Amazon. You can click on our big A that we keep right on our website and order it. Makes a great holiday gift for your kids who uh, like aliens. Yeah, and that's it. All right. Well, I've got some breaking news, Mark. Oh. This is a So Wizard Podcast special report. All right. So uh, we were just talking about anime into movies. And we know Warner Brothers, got a Warner Brother, is uh, going to make a, an Americanized live action adaptation of Attack on Titan. Well, they've got their director. Uh oh. The director of it, Andy Muschietti, is going to be directing Attack on Titan as his next movie after it, Chapter 2. Wow. What do you, what do you guys think? What do you think, Aubrey? I don't care. <laughs> That's so funny. We were just talking about live action Attack on Titan, too. I think that. Why don't you understand that anime belongs in the trash? I thought you liked Attack on Titan, though. I do. I love it, but it's still anime. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a terrible movie. It doesn't matter if Steven Spielberg and James Cameron work together on it. <laughs> what? It's, there's no way you can make this into a coherent two hour movie. It's going to be terrible. I'll be more than happy to eat my words, but this is going to be bad. I mean, they have a blueprint already from the the Japanese live action one. So they know what to do, what works and what doesn't work. So all they really need is, you know, good character development. And the characters are, are interesting, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you make the movie just about the first few episodes of the series where the titans are attacking and then they're attacking them back like that's a cool movie but uh, you can't get into like all the craziness of the story that we're like three seasons in 50 episodes and have it make any sort of sense and it's not exactly the type of story where like john q public is going to be like oh yeah this is great like no it's, it's really nutty it's very anime as it gets going so We'll see. We'll see. But I'm just fully expecting it to be terrible, but I will go see it in the theater. Mm -hmm. Well, they said Ghost in a Shell can be made into a live action movie and boom. (laughs) Yeah, they said there'd never be a live action Dragon Ball movie. So, yep. So, boom, (laughs) two for two. Take that. (laughs) (laughs) There is. I did see footage. uh, Someone had leaked, not leaked, but put footage online of uh, the Attack on Titan ride. That's yep. somewhere overseas, and that looked that looked pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can put that type of experience in a theater, 
You know what I'm saying? That that could work. You can put people in a in a uh, you know heart racing adventure, kind of like that. Maybe I don't know. I can't wait for Selena Gomez as Mikasa. <laughs> <laughs> you put shit like that out in the world, dude. It is I going know, to happen. I shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't put that out in the universe, should I? All right. All right. So, yeah, so, yeah that, that's all I got for the news. You got any more breaking news, dude? That's it. That's all we've got that's broken. All right. Other than Aubrey inside. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? We're we're gonna we'll make a claim right now, Aubrey. We are not gonna let you go watch Attack on Titan. Good. There you go. All right, that's all the news that's fit to print this week. Let's talk a little bit about the new series on Netflix, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So we all had a chance to watch a little bit of it. I know we've all at least seen the first episode, so we kind of wanted to just give some impressions and a little bit of review of what we thought so far. So maybe that'll help you decide if you want to check it out, especially with Halloween right around the corner as or possibly even past as this drops. <laughs> you uh, you might want to see something spooky and ooky. So everybody had a chance to watch a little bit. Let's just do some non spoiler to start. What did we think, Aubrey? It was good. I'm, ex- I'm excited to watch episode two and to watch the rest of the series. It's not like, oh, my God, amazing, but it, it's good. Okay. Uh, Mark? Uh, yeah, I felt the same way. I thought it was a nice start, uh, but there wasn't anything that I feel like I really need to watch the rest of it right away. Uh, but I did, like, I did like the first episode a lot. Huh. Okay. I loved it. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> and I want to watch the whole rest of it right now if I didn't have to go to work tonight. <laughs> It's not as good as Stranger Things. Let's not get it twisted, but it's really good. So I think that's as much as we could say without spoiling things. So, Mark Ellis, why don't you drop down a spoiler tag and we'll get started. Spoiler alert. I have seen the future and I had to prevent it. (laughs) Excellent. All right. So, you know, Sabrina, uh, you know, what what did you guys think? Lay it on me. Why was it only okay, Aubrey? Well, you know, it... I guess I I get annoyed with her self righteous attitude. Whoa. Yeah, I I feel like she she comes across in a certain way that is uh, annoying. Like she's just like I have to make this club to protect all the women in the school, and it's like oh fucking god, here we go, burn your bra. I thought that was sweet. I don't know, it was annoying to me, <laughs> and. So that that's annoying. And then on top of that, I just feel like I don't like how they keep calling her Brina. Like, stop it. <laughs> just stop calling her Brina. And it's annoying. It's so annoying. And I don't, I'm, I'm excited to see the rest of it because I, I don't know. The first episode is always hard for me to enjoy because it's the setting of the story, introducing the characters. And for somebody that you already know about. It's really cringy to watch the first episode to establish that character. So I didn't, while I didn't enjoy the first episode, I also didn't enjoy the first episode of Jessica Jones. So uh, yep. it's just who I am as a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought for the most part, it was really good. It is a lot of setup though. It doesn't really say like, it's a lot of world building that they have to do right at the beginning to get you like ready for it. So in that aspect, that, that that's kind of where it falters for me is just all of the setup. But uh, obviously, if I watch more episodes, I'm probably going to like it a lot more. I did like the fact that she was already in a sweet relationship with her boyfriend, Harvey. Was that his name? Yes. Um, Harvey Kinkle. I Yeah, I like the fact that they were like, you know, that we don't have to play the, uh, the uh, will they or won't they season, CW season finale thing that uh, is most common with teenage TV shows. Um, I'm glad that they, you know, and that he's actually cool. He seems like a cool dude. Like there isn't like a lot of friction between them. Um, I like that her friends look unique. They have very unique looks to them. I think that's cool. I, well, I really like, I really like the, um, the two ladies that played her, play her aunt, the chick from Lord of the Rings and the, um, uh, the other girl from, uh, well, uh who was that in Lord of the Rings? The, the one that was, um, Eowyn. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The one that like put a, a hobbit on, on the back of a horse with her and she went on in the field like like she was a guy, but she was really a, a chick. 
Erwin, yeah. I love that chick. That was her. Yeah, smoking a cigarette with the uh, with the cigarette holder. Oh, I gotta re- I gotta go look at that again because I always <laughs> like that was always my thing in Lord of the Rings was like why did um, Aragon go date boring <laughs> Liv Tyler who doesn't do anything except show up in like weird dream sequences and be like. Aragon. <laughs> Miranda Otto. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you date like some smoking eyed chick that wants to like fight ring wraiths? But that's that's the uh that's the immortal question of men, dude. Like why would yeah, Thor right. why would Thor date Natalie Portman when we can have Lady Sif instead? <laughs> when you could have had her other friend with the huge hooters. <laughs> yeah, Dennings. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so I really like her and the other girl that was. Uh, she used to be on The Office and on a British Office back in the day, and then she was um, Etta Candy in uh, Wonder Woman. So uh, yeah, I really like the aunts. I like the cast. Yeah, and visually, it's really cool. It was pretty gory. Uh, shout out to uh, cousin Balky. <laughs> I noticed that was him. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! Not only is he still around, but he's he's actually pretty good in a TV show. It's so good for him. So yeah, it's, yeah. So the only issue I really had with it is that it's the first episode. It, they spend a lot of time building up stuff, so you don't really feel like any kind of you know uh, relief or any kind of like you know resolution. But it, it, it's the first episode. It probably you're probably not going to get that right off the bat. I did like all of the characters though. I had to I had to stop watching it before I went to sleep though because I, I knew it was going to give me nightmares. <laughs> I, I really liked it. Um... Yeah, I, I liked all the world building. I thought that was really cool. I really liked, uh, like you said, Mark, she has a boyfriend and it's not, we're not going to spend the entire season hoping that they get together. They're already together. Mm-hmm. And they're very sweet to each other, too. It's it's nice. Yeah, they're actually a nice couple. I I, I was I was very worried as soon as the uh, rah-rah fight the power uh, social justice stuff started showing up. I was like, oh, boy. So I reaching for the remote. But uh, it actually was kind of a cool dichotomy because she's doesn't want to become a witch where women have all the power. Right. <laughs> but she wants to stay human where they don't. So it was, it was kind of cool. If that's where they're going with it, if it's just going to be stupid, like Burger King Kids Club diversity, I think I might check out. But that I think that's my major problem with it at the moment is that it's coming across as like just a social justice PSA at this point and it, it's obnoxious you know I, I'm so sick of p- politics being everywhere the last thing I want to do is watch about it in a fucking show you yeah. know I watch TV to shut my brain off not to fucking think stop it what did you guys think of the aesthetic they had where like the edges of the screen were fuzzy I might have not noticed it because I was watching it on my phone Okay. I what about you, Mark? Yeah, I didn't notice that at all. Oh, there wait. were certain times when the witches would show up. A lot of times, the edges of the screen would be blurry. Oh. But like in the beginning, mm-hmm. when she killed the teacher. Yep, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I actually thought that was cool. That's a cool filter that's on one of my uh, photo apps. So I'm like, oh, that's nice <laughs> that they incorporated into this TV show. <laughs> Did they film it on your phone? Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, they could have. I've heard some people online complaining about that. It didn't bother me, but I could see like if it's going to be used over a lot of an episode, it could be a problem. But mm-hmm. well, that's the funny thing about Netflix shows is that they've already filmed them all. You know what I mean? They've already done season two. So if a lot of people jump online this week and like we hate this character or we hate this camera style, you're stuck with it. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Season one's already in the can. Suck yeah, it. suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the girl that played Sabrina? Dude, she looks there are moments where she actually looks like Melissa Joan Hart. And I'm like, did they do I this on her purpose? In Mad Men, so. She never had a lazy eye on the show. <laughs> it's, all, you know. it's wrong. It's wrong. Um, Aubrey, how much of Mad Men did you watch? I haven't watched any of that at all. Uh I don't even remember what season I left off on. Probably three. That seems to be my cutoff on everything but she must have been like a kid like a tiny kid she was end. yeah she was a tiny kid and she was good on that show as a kid oh yeah oh well right on mm-hmm. yeah i thought she was actually adorable and I, there was a certain there was a few scenes where i'm like man she actually does kind of look like the old sabrina I, I wonder if they did that on purpose and so. they mentioned riverdale which i thought was kind of cool i can't remember 
I know they mentioned Greendale in Riverdale, and I can't remember what they say about Greendale, except that you never want to go there. Yep. Well, so I thought that was a really cool tie-in. Yeah, they'll they'll be linking those shows up at some point. I'm sure of it. I'm sure. Of it. But Joey, what did you think of uh, Sabrina, the new Sabrina? Ah, uh, she's great. Yeah, I want I want to hold her hand and walk around the woods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, she's good. She's cute, and she's does a really good job on the show. So I mean, I'm all in. You know, again, she's no Melissa Joan Hart, but you know, who is who is. Did you guys watch that show? Were you fans of the old Sabrina I show? have watched the entire series. Mark? Uh, I might have watched one or two episodes by accident. <laughs> I used to love that show. Hopefully later on on this show, uh, Soleil Moonfry will show up <laughs> as her friend at college. I was, That'd be cool. I was just about to say that. Who's going to be Punky Brewster in, uh, in the remake? What, uh, like, 90s like television kid star could show up and be uncomfortably smoking hot. <laughs> in the show. <laughs> I didn't want to think about it. And uh, yeah, no, uh, please no more spiders. Let's uh, let's nip that in the bud right away on the show. That was good enough for the first episode, but I'm all set. I don't like not, not a fan a, of spiders. Not a big fan of spiders. Not at all. No. Yeah. That didn't, that part didn't creep me out at all. I thought it was actually pretty cool. Me neither. I just don't like anything that's do with spiders. <laughs> what did you guys think of her cat? Um, I thought that was really cool. I was wondering how they were going to bring the cat and have it be, you know, have it make sense. Um, and the way that they, they brought it up, I thought it was pretty cool. So, yeah, I like it. I, will, I thought it was interesting because normally, like, Salem was a prisoner who was stuck with Hilda in the other show. So this one was interesting. I kind of like it. It makes more sense. Mm-hmm. It's not as um, feel good and poppy as the other one is. It's kind of dark, which goes along with the theme. I like when he fucked up that scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That was great. Yeah, I, I'm hoping he's going to start talking eventually, though. That's the thing. I don't think he'll be like hanging out filing his nails or anything. Oh, but... really? <laughs> yeah, I, just... I want him to start talking. So, yeah, I mean. What so give me a, a, a final impression, guys? W- are you going to keep watching this, Aubrey? I'll probably keep watching it just to see if I like the rest of it. Okay. How about you, Mark? Are you going to keep up on this? Uh, I want to say yes. Uh, I'm going to try, and we'll see how I fall off. See if I fall off. I know that they've already started season two, so I know that. Uh, I know at least I have to at some point make it to the end of this one. But uh, we'll we'll see how long they can keep my attention. Awesome. Well, I am all in. So unless it gets really stupid later on in the season, I am all in for this. I'm going to hopefully finish it in a couple of weeks, but I got to work on Daredevil also. So, Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> it's tough out there for a pimp, you know. All right. So that's going to be our, our little impressions of the beginning of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Let's wrap things up this week with some recommendations. Aubrey, what do you got for the listeners out there? Um, I recommend everybody stay in school. Don't go into retail. <laughs> That's your suggestion every week. <laughs> With the holidays coming up, it just becomes truer and truer. Aww. All right. <laughs> Mark Kellis, what about you? Um, I cannot recommend enough Daredevil Season 3. It is by far the best Marvel superhero TV show that they've done other than Daredevil season one. It's amazing. Everything that you can, compl- at least everything that I complained about from the other shows does not factor into this show at all. They did, they do everything right, except for one small, tiny thing that bothered me. But uh, other than that, it's 99.9% amazing. It's so good. I'm going to watch it again the whole season. It's so good. So uh, yeah, Daredevil season three on Netflix. Please watch it, especially if you're kind of, uh, if you're turned off by, Iron Fist or Luke Cage or Jessica Jones. This season is so amazing. Um, watch it, please. And uh, Karen Page is in it. Yeah, and she's not annoying. I know a lot of people <laughs> complain in the other seasons. At least I didn't. I didn't think she was. Some people still think I she never was. thought she was. I, I think she's hot. Yes, and awesome. And every, every everyone has like a really good story, and it's all connected together. It's hashtag. It's all connected. I love it. I absolutely love it. 
Nice. I'll have to keep up on that. Well, I will suggest that everyone goes to SoWizardPodcast.com where they can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks, so much more. SoWizardPodcast.com. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, where you can find the podcast every week. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode as well as check us out on Patreon, patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast, so you can get yourself some extra content and extra episodes of the show while pledging to us monetarily. Uh, my suggestion is if you are in the area, or even maybe if you're not, get yourself to the Rhode Island Convention Center and Dunkin' Donuts Center, Providence, Rhode Island, the 2nd through the 4th of November for Rhode Island Comic Con, the seventh annual Rhode Island Comic Con, and I believe the third year in a row that myself and Mark Ellis will be heading up there as press to give you lots of coverage straight from the con floor. There's some exciting stuff going on. We've got guests like Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker himself. Uh, we've also, Keith or Sutherland's going to be there. Uh, let's see, Tim Curry, Randy Quaid. Uh, me and Mark Ellis's uh, favorite, Jessica Henwick, mm-hmm. who you might know as Colleen Wing from Iron Fist and Defenders. And, of course, you know, we're going to see our friends Super Retro Throwback and the Angry Geek show there. And it's just going to be a really good time. I'm really excited. Our, our friends, the Angry Geeks, are doing a, a pre-after party party panel <laughs> on Saturday night, which is adults only. So it's going to be uh, M-rated content. I'm interested to see what that's going to entail. Hopefully not any Jar Jar Jeremy nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe so. I don't know. He, I know. He, we'll see. He, he likes to read comic books without any shirts on. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Everyone's excited. Uh, Wonder That Wonder Woman will show up in a ski parka and Jeremy will be in a bikini. <laughs> it's just I, the way life works. I, I can only hope. <laughs> so next week on the podcast, you get to hear a lot of coverage from me and Mark Ellis's time at Rhode Island Comic Con. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Patreon because Patreons next month are going to get two episodes. Our review of Bohemian Rhapsody, as well as our attempt to survive watching M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening are both exclusive on Patreon next month. But this has been episode 221 of the So Wizard podcast. On behalf of my hosts, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Excelsior. And Goodbye. the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Everybody have a good Halloween uh, Wakanda forever. I've been your host, Joey DiCarlo. This has been episode 221 of the So Wizard podcast. We'll see you next week. Good journey.